Hello everyone and welcome back to Insights at Dee Dee Lynn Designs. This is Dee Dee Lynn and I'm really excited today to show you how to make what I call kind of like a boho, fun, really fun unisexed, which means you could use bigger gauges for guys, uh, link bracelet. So we're going to change it up in case you were all looking at my post recently about my next tutorial coming. And I'm thinking about adding this bead in the limit. And the bracelet that I showed you online uh, regarding, again, my tutorial coming for this bracelet was sold. <laughs> so I don't have it as a display anymore. But you can certainly put all sorts of beads down off your links here. So it's completely connected. And if you notice here on this one, I graduated it. I used 16 gauge, then 18 gauge, and then 20 gauge to make the links. Then I attached it with a hook and two very large jump rings. This measures from this hook to the second jump ring approximately seven and a half to just underneath seven and three quarters of an inch. So we're going to be working with 20 gauge today. So to determine how many links you're going to need is based on the lengths of your links. So I've already done some measurements for you and these six 20 gauge links, if you do them exactly like I'm going to teach you today, equal two, let me measure them again, just the links. So these six links, not the 18 gauge, measure two and a half inches. So 12 links would be five inches. And if you wanted a um, six and a half inch bracelet, then you would do four more. So to do a 20 gauge linked bracelet chain for your bracelet, and you can do these for necklaces too, um, I would say anywhere between 13 to 15 links you're going to need, and that's going to be based on not adding a bead, okay? So you can always gauge it as you're going. So before we get started, everyone, you know I'm always plugging for your subscriptions and likes and comments. Don't forget to hit the bell so you know when my new tutorials are coming out next. But as you all know, I'm trying to get monetized, so really, please, 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 just uh, subscribe and give me your feedback, and I promise you, I'll get back to you. Now, if you'd like to follow me, um, all of my social media pages are D-D-L-Y-N-N -N Designs, that's plural, dot com from my website if you're interested in any of my one-of-a-kind custom jewelry, or Facebook Dee Dee Lynn Designs or Instagram. So let's get started. So the first thing that you're going to do, and I've already created some of my links and started to set myself up because you don't need me, you don't need to see me making these 13 to 16 times. So we're going to talk about this here in a second. So the first thing you're going to do is determine how many wires you're going to need. And since we're going to be doing this in 20 gauge, I'm not going to be doing the graduated one. I will show you the difference in working with a 16 gauge, which is very hard on the fingers. I'll let you know because you can't just bend it with your fingers. And we'll talk about that when I show you uh, a sample of making a 16 gauge link because this is what I used for the men's bracelet. And you can really see the difference in size when you compare that to a 20 gauge. So you're going to cut yourself, as I said, uh, four inches, 14, I would start with 14, so pieces of 20 gauge wire. And what you're going to do is you're going to create a hook or an L shape on all of these wires, and I would recommend that you do them all in advance. And to not drive yourself crazy, <laughs> um, bending each one at a time, I actually take four to five wires at a time. Here I've done three wires because I've already uh, started the links on all of these, and I've marked them, so this is four inches of wire, 20 gauge, 
and I've marked them one and a quarter inches back from the top of where I'm going to bend. So you can see my marks. And then what I do is I take a flat nose, very fine tipped flat nose, and I come to the where the mark, so the mark starts here. So I'm going to come right at that mark. And all I'm going to do so I can bend them all at once is bend them down. Just need to put a little bend in them. So I would do that to all your 14, 15, how many uh, wires you're using. I Again, for a, a six and a half inch to seven inch bracelet, you're going to need somewhere between 14 and, and 16 based on whether or not you're going to use a bead. So I would do all of these at first. You're kind of doing it like, what do they call that when something's on a system? I can't remember the name. Oh well. So I would do them all at once so that you're ready to go. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create our links. And some of the links we're going to keep open. This is just to give you an idea, which means I haven't closed these off yet. And the reason that I haven't is I'm going to be connecting my close link in there so that the bracelet can never come undone. This is super sturdy and it's even sturdy with 20 gauge if you've been following me for a while y'all know that I don't like to do bracelets or anything in 20 gauge unless I'm using a lot of wires but when you're wrapping your wire over and over itself twice it's very very sturdy so let's get started so that you can see where we're going with all of this so I'm assuming that you bent all of your wires one and a quarter inches from the top so just mark them, which makes it easier for you, and then you can do several at a time. So what I'm doing now is I'm using the first step on my six-step pliers, and my bend is going away from me, and I'm going to put my six-step pliers in here, and I'm using the smallest, and I'm just going to push that wire up and over towards me. Now I'm going to bring it all the way down, and then I'm going to swing that wire and I'm going to go ahead and adjust my pliers and I'm going to swing that wire all the way over. I'm going to take my pliers out and I'm going to get my Zuron needle nose and because 20 gauge is so soft I'm going to go ahead and wrap this wire going away from me. I'm going to wrap it four times. So this is the first wrap because it's already wrapping over. So that's called our first, which is one. And I'm just pushing it, two. And you can always pinch it down a little bit if you've got too much of a gap. Three. And I'm gonna come around the back and complete it with four. If you find that it hurts your fingers, because I gotta tell y'all, after you do several of these, it's a bit of a, it's tough on your fingers, it really is. And yesterday I poked myself way too many times doing this sample. Um, so <laughs> you, you, you might wanna use your pliers. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it over and I'm gonna recommend that when you're wrapping this last wrap over, that you use a short nosed plier. This is Zuron, and the um, the number on this one is called a Zuron Grip 475. If you're interested in it, I don't use these a lot because they're they're dangerous Dannies, is what I call them. When you have a very short nose, your pliers can dig in quickly. But where they're super super helpful is when you uh, want to really work off that gauge of wire because you don't need a lot of length off your plier and you have a lot more control. All I'm doing here is I am anchoring off that wire itself because it's too short for me to use my fingers to bend it over. And if you notice, I am just slowly letting the pliers do the work for me and I am squeezing that over. Now if you have excess, go ahead and cut, cut it off. And I think I am just going to take a little tiny bit off from there. I wonder where that truck's... Oops, sorry guys. I'm looking out my window and this big truck is going backwards down our road. 
And for those of you that are new to my channel, I live in beautiful Sedona, Arizona. If you've never been here and you're not super far away, it's absolutely magical place. Okay, so now, as you can see, I've completed um, the first loop on my link, and this is just giving you an idea of where we're gonna go. And I'm gonna wrap that wire back over itself, okay? So how you know where to start your loops again so they're in the same direction is, it's not critical, but if you want your loops to be in the same direction, if you turn your loop sideways, which is what I call sideways or horizontal versus um, vertical up and down, you will notice that your loop wire is crossing, it's on the outside, okay, and it's going up and over. But this loop is actually, and I'm going vertical now, is tucked in, meaning your wraps that you made are going around this loop. So do you see the difference? So this is tucked in at the neck and this is not. So how I keep myself in check and make sure that my loops are the same on each side, I always start with where I left my wire cut off on this particular design. That doesn't mean that I do that with every design that I make. And the reason is, is because this is a very measured piece. I cut back one and a quarter inches from the top. I bent it on a 45 degree angle. I created my loop and I wrapped it four times. So that fourth wrap is ending at what I call the wonky side. And if you notice, it's kind of just, it's hard to explain it, but I think you can see it, but it's the one that's riding on the outside. So all I'm gonna do is I'm going to get as close as I can and I'm just gonna bend that down, just like that. Then I'm gonna get my six step pliers and I'm gonna bring them in real close. And as before, I'm just going to push this wire up and over my bail making pliers, okay? And then I'm going to swing it around, but I'm gonna adjust and this is important for beginners. I'm gonna adjust my plier and my wrist, and you notice that it was here. Well, our wrists weren't designed to turn in very much, so you need to adjust your wrist. This gives you good working room. And then all I'm gonna do is swing that over. Now, we wanna make kind of like a perfect bow tie. So if you find that your loop is too high, uh, meaning higher up on this side, all you gotta do is just make a gentle rock with your wrist. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out just to give you an idea of how we've just made this darling little bow tie. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I need four of these open, okay? To connect them to my links, okay? So you could set up, let's say you're doing um, 14 links, I would leave seven closed and seven open, meaning having almost finished this completely, but you haven't closed off this side yet, because as I mentioned before, you're going to connect those in, and we'll do that in a minute. So I'm gonna leave that open, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do two more just for demonstration purposes. So as we did when I started the tutorial, I marked my wires. I bent them one and a quarter inches back, uh, because they're 20 gauge. When you're working with a larger gauge, you're going to have to extend this wire further out and your wire is going to have to be longer. So for 18 gauge, I would cut five inches and I would bend it one and three quarter inches from the top back. And for 16 gauge, I would cut six inches and bend it at least two inches back. And I'll be demonstrating that for you. So <clears throat> I'm going to do the same thing again. My wire is facing away from me. And I'm just gonna get my six step pliers. I'm using the smallest bail and I'm just going to push it towards me. I adjusted my wrist. I'm rolling that wire up, making sure that that's square. Pulling out, I'm gonna grab my loop and all I'm going to do is swing this around four times. That's my first, there's my second, there's my third, and if it bends, don't worry, 
that happens, we can correct that. I'll just come around the back, straighten her up. And if you find that they're not lining up, just come in at the neck and squeeze them together. And if it bends on you, just correct it before you're done. It's better to make corrections as you're going than waiting until you're done, because sometimes we can't get back in. So that's my third. I'm on the back now, or my front, however you want to look at it. And I'm just squeezing it in to the neck. So it's nice and tight and flush. So there's my third, which means if I turn it around to the front again, I've completed my fourth wrap. So now I'm going to turn it over, meaning in a working position for me. And I'm going to get those nice stub nose. And these are kind of like a flat nose on the top. But they're very stubby, so they're not super long. So I have a lot of control when I'm working with a little wire, just a little end like this, versus trying to use a big, long uh, jawed plier. And I'm just swinging that around. So I've completed my fourth rotation in the front, and I'm going to close it off in the back. And this one, I can see that I do not need to trim it. Sometimes they're just a little off. So as before, I'm going to close this one off so that you can see that technique because you need to uh, see me completely double wrap this, which I didn't do on this. So let's say you have your 14 wires. You're going to close off, which means these are all double wrapped, and I'm going to show you how to do that twice. So we've made our first set of wraps, I'm looking for that wonky side. So that's the wire that's coming up over. So I'm horizontal now. I'm going to turn it vertical. The wire is going away from me. And you can see where I cut it right there. So that should be on top because I want my loops in the same direction. I'm just going to make a gentle bend, get my six step pliers, bring them back up and over, turn it over adjust my wrist, swing that wire up and over, and if it's not lining up, just rock it until it is. And we have ourselves a little bow tie. Now we're going to close this off, and this is how it's going to be for every single one of your links, but we're leaving those open so that I can connect them all so they never come apart. There are no jump rings until we get to the ends. All I'm doing is the same thing now, but I'm wrapping over my four wires, and I'm going to do five wraps. Now, before I complete those five wraps, I want to let you know that you don't have to make them flush next to each other, okay, like that. You can do a loose wrap. So this is 16 gauge, and I can tell you it will beat the dickens out of your hands after you do just a couple of these, because this is really hard wire, but it looks awesome for a man. And I did a very loose wrap. I didn't bring them super close together. So it's really up to you. But because I've done all of these in a flush, tighter wrap where they're right next to each other, I'm going to continue that. So all I'm doing, and this is all of our excess wire. Now you know what those four inches, why we measured back one and a quarter to create four perfect wraps. And now we're going to do five wraps. So that's already swung it over once. This is two. And I'm just wrapping over my wires that are already there. Three, four, and this is five. And I'm just going to swing it under, okay? Just like that. So it's coming out the back on the other side. All I'm going to do now is turn it over. And I'm going to get my fabulous flush cutters that are just diamond blade sharp. And I'm coming up underneath it. If you're new to my channel, I don't want a super blunt end, so I'm going to shave that off. So I'm coming up underneath that on an angle. And I'm just going to shave that edge off. And if you notice, it's not perfectly blunt. I, I did it on an angle. And then I'm just going to make sure that it's tucked in correctly. Okay? So that's the completed, which is what we're going to do on this one when we attach our links. Then we're going to continue wrapping it around these four looped wires five times. So that's why you have to leave the equal amount of your bow ties, I call them bow ties, uh, open 
for the amount that you have closed depending on how long your bracelet or necklace is going to be because you're always going to need to connect. So let's do this one more time. So I've already bent my wire one and a quarter inches back. I'm going to roll it over, adjust it my wrist, pull it straight up, pull it out, and wrap it around this core wire here four times. That's two, three, and again, here's a perfect example. If it separates like that, just grab your pliers and just bring it up. So I've got my pliers inside the loop and I'm just squeezing those loops up against the neck. These are really great tips and techniques. And I promise you, if you're a beginner, it will really help accelerate your journey in this ancient art of wire. Now, if you find, like I did yesterday, I stabbed my thumb, I think, about three times. <laughs> Ouch. We all know it doesn't feel good. Um, you don't have to keep using your fingers. And you guys do whatever works for you. I'm actually going to show you how to use your pliers. And I'm just going to grab my chain nose here, and I'm just going to swing it around. And I'm letting my chain nose kind of do the work for me. Now I want to really bring in those stub nose because I have a lot more uh, support and control with these. So let me just make this in a better working position for me. And then I'm just going to swing that down. And let's see if almond. Now this one's a little long, and that's okay. That's what I'm saying. We're never going to have them exactly cut exactly the same, and and you don't have to be super super concerned about that. Just make sure that when you're doing this, because this isn't technical other than your measurements. If you want your uh, links the exact same length, I made one with all sorts of different sizes and all sorts of different lengths and it was super, super fun. So as before, I'm finding my wonky side and I know that I'm on the right side because where I cut my wire, it's sticking, it's facing up. So I'm just gonna bend it down and get my six step. and swing that over. Now I'm going to leave this one open because I want to connect them all for y'all and I might need to have one open. And I just kind of rocked this side down a little bit just to straighten it out so that I have a good bow tie. Now what you're going to do when you leave them open, because we need to connect the other links that are closed, we just want to lift up on them a little bit so that we can give ourselves working room to slide our links through. So let's go ahead and do that. Now on this bracelet I had six of these uh, 20 gauge wrapped links on each side. And we'll see how many I have here. I may have to uh, add a couple of more. But all you're going to do now, and you just want to make sure that you do even amounts for each side. So you notice I just slid that down. And it's just dangling on the outside. So that's why we keep this end open. Then I pushed that down to close that up. And it can be a little fiddly because you got this little dangly link over here, this little guy kind of getting in your way. So just take your time. And as before, when I showed you how to close off your link, it's the same thing. I've just got my little buddy over here, and I'm just going to wrap around these wires. So that's my first wrap five times. You could do three, you could do two, but because I started off this way, I thought I would continue with that same pattern. If you want to make something really fun and eclectic, then change up your wraps. They don't have to all be the same. And I'm going to bring it around one more time. I'm going to turn it over. And that's a wee bit long. Again, I'm coming in on an angle. Kind of shaving that blunt end off. It's just easier to hide that tip right there. So now we've connected two of our links. And now you see why we need to have uh, the equal amount open. And of course, sometimes that can change 
based on, you know, what kind of design you're doing or if you're going to be adding beads. So all I did was slide that back in there again and just going to hold it and wrap it five times. And you can use your pliers to do this. I just find with 20 gauge wire, and you're going to see here very shortly, that um, it's much easier just to push it over. So turn it around. And it's monotonous. I'm not one for monotony, but sometimes it's required. So I'm going to do this again, and I'm just going to slip these through. So that's all we're doing, gang. Now, I, know to, I don't know if I mentioned this bead about adding a bead. I'm having that, uh, thinking about that as I'm doing this, whether or not I want to add that as a focal point in the middle. Since this is a softer gauge wire, it has a little bit more, one, two, three, four, a uh, little bit more of a, a softer feminine look to it than this 16 gauge. So I'm thinking about just adding a center bead as one focal bead, and I may drop other beads down below per my post that I let you guys, that I showed all you uh, what was coming. So I might do that. I mean, you would just use your imagination. And then I'm just gonna come in on an angle. Can you see how my pliers are angled? I'm not cutting it blunt. kind of shaved off on the top and I'm just gonna squeeze that in so that's four and I'm definitely going to need uh, more open wires because I want at least five on this side I was thinking about something different when I did this so um, this is how easy it is so now you guys know where we're going so I think what I'm gonna do is I'll connect my bead so I'm going to close this one off. Kind of push it down. There we go. Kind of felt that lock in there. That's two. Three. Four. And I got a little wonky there. So I'm just going to Correct that, push that down. And as I said, you can do as many wraps as you want, meaning you can't go any further than what your distance is there, but you could do less instead of more. So now I'm going to uh, connect my bead and that's going to give me an idea of how many more links and I'm already seeing that I'll probably need all one two three four five six or seven maybe seven on each side um, so let's go ahead and get some 20 gauge wire and this is kind of a cool idea of how to know how to measure uh, sometimes people get really frustrated with in the beginning of making their loops and not having enough wire too much wire um, you can always know that you need at least a half an inch a little a little less than a half an inch to make one loop I like to tie my loops off and I'm going to be connecting it to this chain here so I'm gonna cut myself just because I want working wire, I'm gonna cut myself about two inches of wire because I change up as I go a lot and I get some creative ideas while I'm in the middle of something and I'm like, you know what, but I, I think I wanna change that so I'm always really glad I have some excess wire. So now I'm gonna run my bead through here. I'm gonna find my center and we're going to be connecting it again to this link, we're not using jump rings so that it's permanently connected, it cannot come off. So I'm gonna do the same thing as before. 
just going to bend this over. I'm going to take my bead out right now just so I can work with it. But I wanted you to see it's the same process connecting this, but I need to leave this end open on both sides. So now I'm going to bring in my links. So I have five links connected here. Because you got to remember, I've got my bead in between here. I'm not wrapping these. And then I'm going to close this off. And I'm going to do two full rotations. So that's one. Your first wrap over is one. That's two. I'm going to come around the back. Like that. And you could do more wraps than that. Maybe we should do three, huh? What do you think? change it up and do three. Let's see what that looks like. Let's do three. I'm just tightening up my links here. So let's take it three times. And if you cross over, not a problem. Just move that wire down a little bit and then squeeze it down. There we go. Just want to make sure they're nice and snugged up. Then I'm going to cut that off the back. And I'm just going to roll that wire in. There we go. Felt a little cushion there. So this is where we would connect the other side. So obviously, I'm not going to close this off yet, but I'm going to do the same thing. I'm looking for that wonky side because I want my loops to be in the same direction on each side. So I know that's my wonky side, so I'm going to turn this towards me. Okay. So I'm in a vertical position. The wonky side is up. The cut side is up. I'm going to bend this down, but I am not going to close it off. Now you need to leave yourself a little bit of a gap, maybe a millimeter. Let's see, do we want a millimeter? I would definitely say a millimeter to two millimeter, maybe just underneath two millimeters, because you're going to want to tie off these wires, meaning you're going to wrap three times so they're the same on each side. So if you notice, I have a little gap space there. Make sure you hold your bead really snug against the back so you don't have more slack than you need. So then I'm going to turn this in, but I'm not going to close it off because I need to add in. So just like before, then I'm going to adjust my wrist and I'm going to swing it over, rock it down so that it's parallel with the other side, but I'm not going to close it off until I put in my links. So now I've got my link in, and you could have done this side with your five links and then just keep adding as you're going, but look how cute that is. Isn't that cute? And you can hang all sorts of things down there. So all you do at the end gang is put some jump rings in the end and make a little hook. And that's about it. So I'm just going to close this off because you know where we're going with all of this. And I'm going to swing that around. That's two. And we're going to cut it off back in here on the same direction. So notice... This is cut here, so this is facing towards you. So I want to make sure that I cut this one there. And I'm just going to lift this wire up. Now, here's another cool tip to get up underneath that because it's so close to that bead. Just lift that wire up out of your way so that you can get up underneath it. Then I'm going to come way back and I shave that right down. And I'm probably not going to need to do a lot of tucking because I'm pretty tight in here. So I would say, gang, with 20 gauge wire to do three wraps, you're going to need a two millimeter gap. Okay? If you're into measuring. Measuring was a little overwhelming for me as when I first started out as a newbie a little over two years ago. 
um, but I find it very important now. It really helps if you're going to be super technical. So here's what we're looking at. Isn't that the cutest thing? So all you're going to do is just attach the rest of your um, links and decide on whether or not you want to hang uh, beads through here. Now, if you don't want to use jump rings to hang your beads, make sure that you connect them before you close them off or make a closed loop uh, so it can't come off, if you know what I mean. You may not. So I'm just going to do one more of these because I don't want to continue showing you the same thing over and over again. And all I'm going to do is connect this here. Well, let's go ahead. Yeah, we're going to connect this here. And now you can see why it's helpful if you just set yourself up making as many closed pieces and as open pieces as you need. And then as before, I'm going to push that down. And I'm going to wrap it over five times. That's two, three, four, and I got a little separated there. Coming around into my fifth wrap, and I'm just pushing it with my finger, but I want to keep them lined up. Don't want that dropping down into the neck of my loop. So you do as many as you like. Bringing it around the back. Then I'm going to turn it over. Now, here's something that's, that you may have figured out already, but I just want to... Uh, make that statement. You can't open these up once you close them. That's it. So I will need to connect right now. One, two, three, four, five. One, two. I will need three because I want six. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to need an open connecting link here and one. Actually, I won't need this many. I have too many. So to equal out six, I'm going to need one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, two more open links here to connect them. So this is would be our bracelet, and then you would just add some jump rings and a hook or a lobster claw. So I really hope you enjoyed that, you guys. Now I just wanted to show you really quickly 16 gauge wire and how it is not gentle on your fingers and easy to manipulate. So I, I marked back, just wanted you to see what it's like to work with it. I marked back just a little over two inches because I want it to be on the safe side. And as before, I'm going to bend down. And it's a lot harder wire. Now, you could make this a focal piece. I'm going to do this for the starting of the guys. And uh, I'm going to make a bigger loop because it's going to be for a man. So I don't want this tiny little dainty loop there. So I'm going into my second step. You could go into any size you want. If you wanted to use the biggest, it would just give it a totally different, more, you know, dramatic look, which would look great for women is too. But we're always, when we're thinking of men, things that are just a little bit bigger than, you know, wearing something maybe this small, but that's really personal preference. So I don't really choose for somebody. I just know from what men have bought from me, they tend to always gravitate to something that's bigger, but not always. So I'm going to do this with my second step. All I'm going to do as before, but if you notice, I'm really pushing on that wire. Okay. Now I'm doing the same thing as before, but it's a lot more controlled movement. Then I'm going to take my pliers out so you can see the difference in the loop size and the gauge is significant. 
really changes the look of this particular link and makes it, I think, a little bit more dramatic and bolder. Now I'm gonna use my chain nose, not my Zeron Petite nose, because I need to have something with a wider jaw, stronger, and you know what I think? I have a favorite pair of pliers, but they're not in here. I think they're in my garage. So I'll go back to what I originally had. Now just to show you, it's the same process. When you have length, you, you've got good working room. So you can actually push it around. But if you notice, I'm not pushing it like I did with the 20 gauge because this is a much stronger, meatier wire. And you're going to have to absolutely tighten each wrap. Do you see that gap? That's because my hands aren't strong enough to pull it all the way through. So I'm going to tighten that gap by squeezing my wire. Now from here, I am probably going to use my pliers. So I am going to turn this over because I'm going to push my wire away from me. And now it's getting really hard to do. And the reason is, is I've got very little working wire. So I'm going to come in. You can come in with your flat nose. I'm going to use my stub nose, flat nose, and I'm going to just squeeze that in. You see, did you see how I actually got more wire closely wrapped to this core wire? And then I'm going to just pull it towards me. And you do what you find is most comfortable for you, but I'm going to let my pliers do the work for me and not beat the dickens out of my hands. And if you notice, I'm letting them do that work for me. I'm just pushing that wire around. And I'm going to turn it over in a better working position. And I'm going to pull it towards me to give myself a start. And the same thing, I'm just letting my pliers do the work for me. Now I want to make sure they're lined up. So let me take it out of there for a minute. Just going to squeeze these into the neck. It's really hard to manipulate this wire when it's this thick of a gauge once you've created your loops and stuff. And I'm just going to do the same thing, bringing that wire towards me. What I'm doing is I'm making it easier for myself to be able to anchor off that wire because it's much harder when that wire is sticking straight up. So I'm taking advantage of my tools and setting myself up to go into my next rotation. So that's four in the front. We count our first wrap going over. And then I'm going to come around to the back and I'm going to pull that wire towards me. Just setting myself up again. I'm going to let my pliers do the work for me. And I'm just turning it in. So that's my fourth wrap. Now you can see why you needed two inches to do four wraps of 16 gauge because it takes up so much more space. If you remember, we used a 20 gauge and we only uh, bent back one and a quarter inches from the top. We added three quarters of an inch in length. So we cut, we measured back two inches. I did just a smidge over two inches to get four wraps where we did one and a quarter inches to get four wraps of 20 gauge. So you always need to compensate for that when you're thinking about wrapping. Now I'm gonna come up underneath this wire and I really should be using my super flush cutters, but these things are so dang sharp. And I'm cutting that on an angle and I wanna cut it even more. Just shave that top off. So as before, this thing is heavy duty. As before, all I'm going to do is find my wonky side, which is probably a lot easier to see now. I'm going to turn it vertical. So here we are horizontal with my loop. That loop is coming around at top. I'm going to turn it over. Here's my cut part, my cut wire right here. And I'm going to bend it down as close as possible. I'm using my second step. And I'm bringing that wire over and I'm 
working that wire. Then I'm going to lift it up, adjust my wrist position and over. And if for any reason you're not getting a perfect bow tie, that's pretty good. You can always rock your wrist, meaning rock that, that loop down a little bit so you have this really nice bow tie. And then as before, I'm going to push that in. And because I have so much length now, I should be able to wrap this over for a little bit with my hands. And I'm just pushing that wire op over each loop. Just letting them naturally ride up against each other. But I'm pushing. Now you could stop here. I think that looks really cool. And just do three wraps. And I think I will. I could get four out of this. I wouldn't get five. But I think I kind of like just the three versus covering up that one right there. So I am going to... Let's see. I'm always changing my mind. That's our prerogative, right? Don't forget it's an art. I think I am going to go over one more time. There we go. The wraps are just more even on top now. And then I'm going to cut it off on the back. So I'm just going to pull that in. These are great, you guys, when you're working with short wires or you need really good, strong support. And I'm just going to come in like before on an angle. Now, I like with my heavier gauge wire, and if you're new to my videos, this is um, a true grit file. Two grits, meaning it's very soft and sandy on this side. It's 180, and on this side, it's 100. And instead of using a steel file, I found nail files work equally as well. And I'm just smoothing that edge down when I kind of want to camouflage it. And two, I don't want it sharp. And your thicker gauge wire will feel a lot sharper. So I'm just kind of coming towards myself and bringing that edge down and kind of just wanting it to disappear a little bit. Oops, a little drop ski. So there we have it. So I hope you enjoyed that everyone. It's really the most, most difficult part is just learning how to make these and it's monotonous, that's all. But you can really add anything. You could put a cabochon in between these. It's really up to you and hang all sorts of beads, but you can certainly see uh, how you can change this up simply by using different gauges of wire or doing a loose open wrap when you're coming back over your loops. So I really hope you enjoyed that, everyone. Thank you so much for being a part of this magical, wonderful, ancient art of wire. It dates back before the Phoenicians, so I really encourage you to look up the history. Um, and as Thumper said in Bambi, if you ain't got nothing nice to say, then please don't say anything at all. I wish for all of you all that you wish for yourselves. Have a wonderful, magical wire wrap day. Bye for now.